Well, hello, hello. It is finally fight night here in Birmingham. The Magnificent Seven ride again tonight. Seven fights of so much consequence. There's so much on the line tonight. We've got a mix of British title fights. There's world title fights. There's fighters looking to break out and show they belong at a level. And there's fighters looking to show that perhaps they still belong at world level. There's something for everyone live from 6.30 p.m. tonight on TNT Sports. But we're calling this show The Magnificent Seven. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It's actually The Magnificent Eight because for the next hour or so, you're going to be with us and we have a special fight for you. Ezra Taylor, the unbeaten light heavyweight contender, returns in his first title fight. And for those experiencing uh, any, any audio issues, I can confirm for the next hour, we will have an echo on the feed. How about it, Echo Esselman? How are you? I'm good, thank you. That was a good one, Death. You got Not me bad. good. Um, look, big, big show. Big, big night here in Birmingham. You were there yesterday at the weigh-in. You got around the fighters a little bit. What, what are you looking forward to the most? Let, let me stick it on you straight away. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to Ezra's um, fight that he's got coming up. I trained with him back in... Back in the day, um, at both at the same amateur gym with Ray Ricketts there. Yeah, um, okay. But it's got to be the the fight at the top of the bill, Heaney. Oh, that fight's going to be a good one. I mean, look, he that's his first defence of his British title, Nathan Heaney. That win against Denzel Bentley was on the last Magnificent Seven show. Did it surprise you? Yeah, but um, I think I mentioned it yesterday. Um, he's a fighter that shows a lot of humility. And if you can do that as a fighter and um, and assume someone's better than you at something, go away and work on it until you're really good at that thing and come back and perform the way he performed last time round. I'm really looking forward to see how he performs today because um, the British title is some fighters' world title fight. So you can tell Brad Pauls is going to come out there and he's going to put his best foot forward. You've talked about this. Listen, listen, you are a former British champion. There's something about that belt, isn't there? Tell me. Tell me what you've been saying uh, about that belt. Tell me what it felt like to touch it for the first time. Uh, for the first time, I I dreamt about it so much. So I can attest to that anyone fighting for it, it really wants it. And having won it outright, I, can, I get to look at it whenever I want. And it, it's just so amazing because I just imagine it's like a... British crown melted down and remade into a belt and when you think about it that way it's a different title altogether. Echo, I, I almost wish there was an echo, I want to hear that again and again <laughs> and again, come on. Let's go through the running orders tonight, we've got so much coming up for you. Coming up very, very shortly we kick off with Ezra Taylor against Prince Oko Nazi, Commonwealth Silver Light Heavyweight Championship on the line. That will be live for you on this YouTube feed. And then we kick off live on TNT Sports from 6.30 with a big bang. Pierce O'Leary takes an Havanis Martyrosian. That's two unbeaten super lightweights. Then we've got two unbeaten welterweights. Ethan James and Owen Cooper used to share a room together as amateurs and will share a ring together tonight. The vacant English welterweight championship is on the line and the vacant British super bantamweight championship will be on the line in a very very intriguing fight between unbeaten Dennis the Menace McCann and unbeaten Brad Strand. That's a fight that really has ignited across social media. We then have the return of Zach Parker, who's looking to head towards world title contention in the super middleweight division, but he takes on a former super middleweight champion in Tyron Zoiger. And how about this, the return of the juggernaut? Is Joe Joyce still that same guy that he was a year ago? Or is Cash Ali the man who's going to end the juggernaut? We'll find out tonight because Cash Ali has come with plenty of ambition. That's 10 rounds at heavyweight. And then we head to a world title fight. Eric Robles Ayala, a man who last time was on these shores, dethroned, well, actually took the unbeaten record of Lee McGregor, takes on the unbeaten Liam Davis. And then, of course, we have Nathan Heaney against Brad Pauls, the, the fight that we were talking about, Echo. I mean, now, now, we've, uh, now we've gone through that, now that we've gone through that list, um, what's your fight of the night? And you can't say Nathan Heaney against Brad Pauls. You can't say that again, Echo. Come on, <laughs> give me something. It's got to be the McCann fight. He looks like he, you know, ever since the changes he's made, he, even a different haircut. Yeah. He, look, he looks meaner. He looks 
he looks in the zone. I'm looking forward to that match. And yet, it does feel like a new Dennis the Menace McCann. There was a video that went out across social media. He's, he's so known for his Haribos. He chucked the Haribos in the bin. He said it's a new menace in 2024. But hey, the old menace was pretty good. So what's what's this version going to be like? What do you think? Well, they say don't break, don't fix what isn't broken. But I think in this case, we're just going to get a lot more of him. <laughs> and Brad Strand comes with an unbeaten record and... He comes from a very, very good gym. Like, Nick Ball is here. I can actually see him. I'm sure we're going to speak to him at some point as well. There's Andrew Kane over there, the McGrails. They'll, they've got momentum in that gym. How, how important is that? Oh, that's important. Birds of a feather flock together. So being in a gym with great names like that, it's only going to pick them up. And that's why we're in store for a good match. And they've had a little bit of needle as well. There was a, I think Dennis McCann at the launch press conference, he, he said that Brad Strand had a big head um, at the press conference just now. Uh, Brad Strand said that Dennis McCann was off to Cheltenham with the way that he was dressed. We like a little bit of fun like that, Echo. Uh, a little bit of needle is good. It, it, it spices things up. And what about Liam Davis then? I mean, he is, uh, he's done everything right so far, unbeaten, but this is a step up tonight for him. Ah, oh, def definitely. Um, but you know what you know what he's like dangerous so that's what we we can expect it's, it's quite a division right now that that super bantamweight division because you've got Dennis McCann there and you've got Brad Strand they are fighting for Liam Davis's old belt that British title and you can imagine that they probably fancy a little bit of D Liam Davis one day Davis is a few steps ahead but it's a wonderful mix isn't it yeah, it is, but um, people are always going to be scratching and coming along, moving up the mountain. So when you're at the top of it, you have to keep that hunger, know that all the rest of them are coming for you. Well, they, I know that there's people coming for you. I mean, we talked about the uh, the welterweight fight between Owen Cooper and Ethan James. That's the English, fake and English title on the line. You're a former British champion. I'm sure they are, they're keeping an eye on what Echo Esselman's doing. Well, what do you think about that? Well, they best do, because um, I'm someone to be wary of. Well, look at this wonderful, what, what we can see on the screen now as well. What, what, a, what a lovely graphic that is. Well done. <laughs> looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, all the, all the graphics lately have been good, and the promos for the fights lately as well. Tell me about this, uh, this Owen Cooper, Ethan James thing then, because inevitably, when someone picks up an English champion uh, championship, they do start thinking, hmm, let me, let me go get a British, or let me get someone who was the British champion. If they start calling out your name, I mean, uh, how, how are you going to take to that? Well, treat me like the creature from the Black Lagoon. You, you say my name enough and I appear from nowhere. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> so what, what's that happening with yourself next, Deco? What, what, what can you tell um, us? Well, I've had a few sit-downs with the Warrens and we've been mapping out dates. So um, soon enough, give... Give Warren a tap and he'll he'll let you know when I'm at. We're looking forward to hearing that. Uh, the first fight that's going to be a part of the show tonight, it'll be live on the Queensbury YouTube channel right here very, very shortly. Ezra Taylor. Now, this is a man that, that you know well. Um, same amateur coach, same yeah. old gym. T tell me about Ezra. Yeah, I used to box out of Bilbra Boxing Club, amateur boxing club, with Ray Ricketts as the head coach. And um, whilst I was there... Um, Ezra walked through the doors and I tell you he was he was not the same size he I just remember him as little Ezra and until one day maybe maybe a year or two away from the club when I was on team GB he walked through the doors and I was like he ain't he ain't little no more <laughs> and ever since then I've been I've been looking up <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was watching a, an interview with him actually and he talked about how when he was younger he did go to that gym and he was probably about 15 years old and he, he took a few hidings and he got disheartened and he didn't like it and he left boxing but then he had a massive growth spurt the one that you're talking about came back and uh well, started up beating the guys that used to beat him up yeah but that's that's how life goes um the tables always turn don't they well we've got about a minute until we're gonna head over to thomas triber uh, for, the, for the ring walks and we get to see prince oko nati and ezra the cannon taylor um, what, what are you expecting of uh Oko Nati tonight. I don't know if you've seen him around at all. Well, having looked at his record and looked at a few of the tapes that I've seen of him, 
he can be an explosive fighter. So Ezra is going to have to keep up with what he n usually does. He's quite evasive and he and he's good with his counters. And with an, a live opponent like Okonati, he's going to have to show that he can do that with a step up of opposition. Well, last time out, he uh, he beat Joel McIntyre. Now that was with one second to go in the eighth and final round. That that was quite the win for him. If he can stop this guy as well, that's a couple in a row. Then he's got that Commonwealth Silver Light yeah. Heavyweight Championship. That puts him in a very good position. Ah, oh, definitely. And with the last time he was out, you know, sometimes as a boxer, we, when your trainers tell you we we want you to get the round, so it's not, it's, it's not a bad thing if you don't get the the knockout. Well, he got the rounds and he got the knockout within the time. So That's he got perfect. best of both, yeah. Uh, so what are you expecting tonight? Do you think he'll be looking to get a few rounds in or uh, do a bit of a demolition job on, on this guy? I think Ezra's going to go for a demolition job on this guy. It's one, one of those yeah, ones. There was a look in his eye at the weigh-in yesterday. He looked. He didn't look like he was coming here to get paid for overtime. He, he doesn't play around at all, Ezra Taylor. He's a serious guy and he's a cool guy as well. And I guess well, you've known him since he was 15 and he, he was little Ezra as well. And I guess he was disheartened around that time. Is that, that what you were finding? Um, somewhat, yeah. But when he came back, he came back with, with some vim. Mm. He's, he's teamed up now with uh, Angel Fernandez as well. So in terms of who he's around, he's got Richard Riakpour around him. He's got Fraser Clark, guys like that around him. And they talk about iron sharpening iron, huh? Oh, definitely. I've, I've been down to their gym a couple of times, sparring myself, and seeing Ezra work, you can tell he's really taken from the other boxers around him. He's got that vim, he's got that explosiveness, he's sharing rounds in the ring with them and learning off them as well. They call him the cannon. Oh, and the cannon he is. <laughs> there, was a, there was a video that went round of him before. He was in his uh, amateur gym, not, in, not up in Loughborough. And he was sparring like three and four people at the same time. Have you ever done that? Um, yeah, yes, actually. My, my old coach, Ray Ricketts, used to do that to myself as well. Well, Prince Okonati on his way to the ring now. 30 year old Southpaw from Samania in Ghana. From his 11 wins, 10 have come by knockout. He appears to carry a bit of power. He's got a great energy about him. Proudly carrying that Ghanaian flag. Had a brief chat with him earlier on. Seems quite a, quite a gentle soul, bit of an introverted character. But nothing introverted about this ring walk, actually. His third fight outside of Ghana, Prince Oko Nati. And now let's welcome to the ring from England, the undefeated Ezra the Canyon Taylor! Well, here comes the man they call the Cannon. The first title fight in the professional career of Ezra the Cannon Taylor. He comes in his eighth fight. He will be in the form of a Commonwealth Silver Light Heavyweight Championship. He's calm, he's cool, he's relaxed. Flashy character, confident character. And he believes he is next in line in this light heavyweight division. swag hasn't he Echo? Oh he's got that swag and when you come out to a ring walk music like that you gotta back it up and I know he will. See Angel Fernandez there with him. Big fan of that ring walk. Ez gonna give it to you not X. 
Forget about X, it's all about Ed's going to give it to you. Let's head over to Thomas Driver. Queen Mary Promotions, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Unibet. It is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge Matt Harris, Commonwealth Supervisor Debbie Down, timekeeper Tony Dunkerley. Out of three judges assigned, all from England will be Christine Lee Every and Terry O'Connor. Our referee in charge will be Kevin Parker of England. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the red corner, he comes to the ring wearing gray with black and weighed in officially at 12 stone, seven pounds. Coming to us from Somania, Ghana, he brings a professional record consisting of 11 wins, two defeats, with 10 of his 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prince of God, Oko Hello, Martin. and welcome to Bernard for a magnificent seven live fights. Sam, should we have a quick breakfast this first one? And Hello, and welcome to Birmingham. Across the ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he comes to the ring wearing white with silver and weighed in at 12 stone, 6 pounds. Hailing from Nottingham, England, he is undefeated with 7 wins. 5 of his 7 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ezra the King. Well, nice ovation there for Ezra the Cannon Taylor. Referee will now give his final instructions. The first title fight in the career of Ezra Taylor. Unbeaten so far in seven fights. This is fight number eight. Well, it was a flashy ring walk from both men, really. Commonwealth Silver, light heavyweight championship on the line and a mandatory position for the full <laughs> Commonwealth light heavyweight championship. Ezra Taylor, Prince Oko Nati. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see, Deb, how Ezra comes out as this is his first title match. You don't want to give away too much when you first come out. You want to establish your jab and get used to your opponent's flinches and reflexes. Whoa, whoa. Well, he's got used to him pretty quickly there as he's landed with the right hand. Needs to be careful. Prince Soko Nati has got 10 knockouts from his 11 wins, but no doubt Ezra Taylor got through and got his attention quite early on. Again, looking for that, that right hand to the body. Ezra's making good use of his footwork and using defensive responsibility with his right hand as Okonati comes forward. Well, he's a southpaw, Okonati, but Echo's boxed a few. Just looking a, a tad ragged in, in these exchanges as well. He's, he's keen to hold on. Big swinging right hand from Ezra Taylor. Narrowly misses the target. Another one there as well. Now that Ezra's established that power shot on him, those wide hooks, he needs to feint a bit more just to set those little traps. Well, he's certainly shown that he's, he's got the attention of Prince Okonati. Very much boxing on the front foot, looking for opportunities. Again, that right hand to the body. And there's a right hand to the head, followed up this time. Okonati still there, still powering back. But Ezra's really landing some good scoring shots. He just needs to 
close off that ring a bit better and just establish staying in the pocket with his distance and he'll land so much more. Sort of slowly stalking him here in the first round. He's had plenty of success. Thirty seconds to go here in the first round. We're at the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham. Ezra Taylor, Prince Oko Nazi. And he's gone. Might have just been a balance thing there, but Ezra Taylor. Prince Oko Nazi just holding on there. Just need to be careful there. Can he make it through the round? He doesn't look particularly hurt at the moment. He's just looked a little bit ragged and, and uncomfortable at times. I'm not sure anything has, has really buzzed him so far, Reco, but how, how are you seeing it? Um, I've seen that Ezra established a good right hand to start off with, and um, although he missed swing with the swinging hook, Ezra has definitely landed that left hook at the end of his exchanges, which is what hurt Prince Nati. I think he needs to just keep that pressure on, but establish good feints moving forward, because now he's going to be really paying a lot of attention to his punches now. So the Angel Fernandez giving the instructions in the corner. Ray Ricketts there as well. But a very good opening round for Ezra Taylor. He established himself. Down, round two. Second round here in this light heavyweight fight. Prince Okonati just a little bit slower to get to his feet than Ezra Taylor was. Ezra Taylor bounced up. And I did notice Okonati in the corner breathing quite heavy. We certainly had a lot of pressure put on him in that first round. And Ezra Taylor just just opening up there, the right hand. He lands with a left. Okay, and nice. The left and the right, and that Okolati is still. He's, he's okay, now he seems very wary. He keeps switching his stance, and that could be a sign that he's not comfortable in there. Well, he doesn't look particularly comfortable now. The legs seem to buckle there as Okonati just held on. But Ezra Taylor is having plenty of success here in the second round. Landing almost at will. And right hand again, Okonati having to back up, having no choice but to back up. And clinging on. He'll do well to survive this round, I think, Echo. Yes, he definitely will do well to survive this round. I think Ezra needs to just add a little bit more distance so Okonati is not able to hold. However, I think the referee is giving him a little bit of a telling off for it. And plenty of time left in this round. Ezra Taylor seems to be landing what he wants, but just narrowly missed with the uppercut. Lands again with the right hand. A lot of pressure on Oko Nati. One, two, He's gone down there, and three, I'm not sure if that is a knockdown four, or not. I'm not sure five, if the referee is indeed six, counting. Oko Nati protests, but that will be scored as a knockdown for Ezra Taylor here in the second round, just over a minute to go. And that's a left, and he's I mean, his glove clearly touched the canvas there, it may not matter at all. The rope's holding him up, Oko Nati is all over the place here in the second round, and Ezra Taylor is just starting to open up. Okonati clings on, but he was in a world of trouble there. Oh, definitely, especially from those left hooks once again. Again, that right hand, and again, Okonati finds, him, finds himself backed up against the ropes, trying to cling on and just trying to weather the storm here. If Ezra establishes his jab, clean he's right gonna, hand. If Ezra establishes that jab, he's going to land that clean right hand and make it even more effective. Oh, 
again, just, just that, that movement with that. It's a very clean left hook there. Around 10 seconds to go in the second round here. Ezra Taylor, Prince Sako Nati. It's all Ezra Taylor right now through two rounds. His legs just don't seem seem with him. It feels like he's trying to find his legs again. Maybe it's some of those knockdowns. That left hook certainly yeah. landed. Well, that's two rounds, and uh, we talked about how perhaps Prince Okonati wasn't going to make it through that round. He has made it through, but Ezra Taylor did plenty of damage, Echo. Ezra Taylor definitely did plenty of damage, and in a title match like this, that damage accumulates, so you have to be wary about how much you actually take in the first few rounds. Ezra can now just keep establishing, maybe taking some shots to Okonati's body to zap little pockets of air away from him that will tire him out a lot faster and lead to what seems to be on the way a knockout victory by Ezra. There is a feeling of inevitability about the way this fight's going to go. This is only Okonati's third fight outside of Ghana. The other two times he has boxed outside of Ghana, he has lost those fights. Second down, round and Ezra Taylor looks well on his way to picking up that Commonwealth Silver Light Heavyweight Championship just as he lands a, a very clean left to start. Does need to be careful though because Prince Okonati is still in there, still throwing, and we know he's got heavy hands, Echo. Yes, he's still very much a live opponent. I think from watching his previous fights, you, can't, you cannot take that away from him, especially if he's been hurt. Well, he holds on. Just pushes Ezra Taylor up against the ropes. Referee brings them apart. There's a bit of kidology going on with Okonati smiling at Ezra just then. Yeah. Big wild swinging backhand as well there. Ezra just varying the work. Going to the body as, as well as the head. Ezra seems to have changed his pace a little bit as to not gas himself out in the first few rounds. As I, said, as I said, you do have to bear in mind it's a title fight, so you cannot give it your all in the first few rounds. Well, it's a very good point because he's not gone 10 rounds before Ezra Taylor, and if he does get extended the 10 rounds, which wasn't looking particularly like, likely early doors, it is kind of new ground. Definitely, it is new ground, and when it's new ground, you, you're not quite too sure if you can do it until you do it. But he's, la he's landed a number of shots there, just bending over now, Prince Okonati. Uncomfortable moments for the Ghanaian as Ezra Taylor now piles on the pressure. Ezra can't seem to miss with that left hook. Okonati's keeping his right hand quite low to his detriment. Well, he's complaining of a of a low shot there. And the referee has told Ezra Taylor to go to the, the neutral corner. And Prince Okonati has gone to a knee here. He does, I mean, he appears to be in some discomfort. He's not happy with the shot. Was it low? Was it not low? I'm not sure. He's certainly got himself a bit of respite. And the referee... That's a quick word with Ezra Taylor. And he's just making sure that Okonati is OK to continue. And we do indeed continue. 25 seconds left here in the third round. A straight right hand landing from Ezra Taylor. Okonati still throwing back. Ezra still keeping that pressure on, which is perfect. You want your opponent to feel like they've had a bad round going towards the end of the round and stay in the referees' minds as well. Do you think he sent something from Okonati? I mean, that, uh, you know, the, the complaints of a low shot, we're not sure if it was low or not, but the referee has had a word with him. But seeing him go down, he went down in the last round as well. Oh, definitely. It, once your opponent starts to complain about shots that haven't actually gone low, you know you're getting to them. So you, you know you can up the of, pressure. He's taking a point of Okonati here for pushing down on Ezra Taylor's head. He's having a torrid time in there, the Ghanaian, looking uncomfortable, and now a point docked. Right. 
Ten seconds to go here in the third round. Just having a look at Okonati as he goes back to his corner. I mean, he, he, he doesn't look particularly comfortable. He certainly doesn't look as comfortable as Ezra Taylor in the other corner. But it was an interesting point that you, you did raise, Echo, in that if he isn't able to get his man out of there in the early rounds, it could be uncharted territory because this is the first time Ezra Taylor has been scheduled to fight 10 rounds in his career. It's his first title fight. If he gets to round nine, round 10, I guess he's got to make sure he's got plenty in the tank. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. You have to try and, as I said before, try and make sure you don't put too much into the first few rounds as you have to keep it up. And um, some boxers like to take a little break in the mid rounds and then a little resurgence when, once they get their second win. Second round, round four. But it's something that you can do once you've got that experience and you know how your body works with it. Well, speaking of the body, Ezra Taylor has been uh, constantly going for that right hand to the body. A big left hook there, getting the attention of Prince Oko Nati, who again clings on. But mounting a bit of an attack himself here, Oko Nati. Referee encouraging them to, to carry on throwing. Someone was waiting for a break. Okonati had backed Ezra up and actually was a bit reluctant to throw. Which shows that he's, he's paying him a lot of respect yeah. for his power. Oh, and he's gone down there. A big counter right hand from Ezra the Cannon Taylor. Okonati is showing that he's okay to the referee. He will be allowed to continue. But he doesn't look all together with it. It feels like Ezra Taylor could be a few shots away from ending the fight here in the fourth round. Well, I had to take one there, Ezra Taylor. But he has opened up. Oh, them left hooks. Left hook after right hook. Just needs to be careful he doesn't put too much into this, though. Oh, that was a very good. Very clean jab, getting the attention of Prince Okonati. Okonati looks visibly unsteady. Lands with a counter right there as well, Ezra Taylor. Ezra Taylor just needs to take his time, pick his shots, and let them land with him. Well, it's quite the barrage ar around 30 seconds ago on the ropes there. Both were swinging away, but putting plen plenty into that exchange as well. That might be reflected now into the change of pace. They've both slowed it down a little bit. Ezra just needs to keep that pressure on and not let Okunati get his breath back. Again, that right hand to the body. It's been landing all night for Ezra Taylor. Oh, a big left hook. Okunati looking to hold on. He's found himself on the ropes again. Does land in there. That's a left, that's a right. And Ezra Taylor just opening up on Prince Okunati. I'm surprised, actually, he's that Okonati, yeah, he stood, stood up to that quite well. I can hear Ezra's tra trainer shouting at him to throw more uppercuts, as Nati seems to be. Big right hand in the corner there. The referee's having a look at this, and the referee has seen enough here in the fourth round, and Ezra Taylor has stopped Prince Okonati to win his first title as a professional. A thrilling fight. Okonazi not happy at all. <laughs> I think they're ready to keep carrying on fighting. Prince Okonazi is not happy with the stoppage. Angel Fernandez, uh, they might need to be brought apart here a little bit. The security is in the ring having a look at this as well. We've got a very, very unhappy Prince Okonazi. And Ezra Taylor just Having a little word with him, it's not Ezra Taylor who called the fight off. I mean, he did what he could with the fist, and then it was the job of the referee. Okonati agreed, but Ezra Taylor has the first title of his career. What do we think, Echo? Uh, it was a, well, it was a wicked performance, and yes, Okonati is not happy about the result, but the referee is just doing his job. Ezra was visibly overpowering him, getting more shots, getting the winning shots, and um, I 
eye-popping shots as well. So the referee had no choice but to stop the fight. Well, even now you can see he's uh, arguing with the doctor, his Prince Okonati. His manager with him there as well. I mean, they are complaining, but Ezra Taylor had him down in the fight, had him hurt a few times in the fight as well. There was a bit of a feeling of inevitability about it. It was a torrid round for Prince Okonati. And the well, let's head over to the official result with RMC Thomas Triber. Good evening, boxing fans. The National Rail timetable today is subject to change. Please would you check the rail times for your journey tonight. Your train could be affected by these changes. Thank you and enjoy the boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 45 seconds of round number four. Our referee in charge. Kevin Parker stops the contest, therefore your winner, by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and now the Commonwealth Silver Light Heavyweight Champion, Ezra the Cannon Taylor! Well, Ezra Taylor moves to 8-0 and, oh, and is now the mandatory challenger for the Commonwealth Light Heavyweight Championship. That is a belt currently held by Joshua Bowatsi. I'm not sure what his plans are with that belt, but Ezra Taylor with this win becomes the silver champion and puts himself into a fantastic position in the light heavyweight division. It was interesting that before we heard from Thomas Triber, we actually heard from the PA at the venue as well. Mm -hmm. Lovely little surprise there, Echo. <laughs> yeah, uh, about the train times, yeah. yeah. No, it's good information, it's good, it's good to know. For, uh, not necessarily for the viewers of the Queensbury stream, but, but for people in the arena, they need to know when they're gonna get home. We're looking at Ezra Taylor now with that Commonwealth silver title on his shoulder. I made up for him. Your first title gives you so much confidence. What, what was your first title? My first title was the English title. I had to fight Andy Keats for it. And just like Ezra did, I, I got that stoppage win. Uh, you can see Prince Okonati here. He, he is distraught. He is uh, up against the ring corner. Now making his way to the back. But uh, Ezra Taylor, first title of his career. He has been telling the world that he is next in line in the light heavyweight division. It is a quite brilliant light heavyweight division in this country. And Ezra Taylor, with that belt, with that win, adds himself into the mix. It could be a very, very bright 2024 for the Cano. Oh, made up for him. Yeah, definitely a bright 2024 for the Cannon. He needs to line up his opponents and let it blast it once again. You can see in the ring there, Ray Ricketts, the coach from day one. Angel Fernandez was in there as well. He's already dropped the belt, goodness me. I think, he's just, I think he's just vacated his Commonwealth silver title. I think that, that counts, doesn't it? I think <laughs> he's not you dropped the belt, the, you've given it up, so. <laughs> he's not used to the belt control just yet. No, no, well look, if he, if he wants any practice, he can come to you for that. You've had, you've had plenty so far in your career, uh, Echo. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him how to hold four at the same time. <laughs> Well, I think he's going to come and join us very, very shortly, Ezra the Cannon Taylor. Um, but your reflections on that? You're, uh, you're, you're happy with his performance? Uh, your I'm mate? happy with his performance. He performed very well. It, it, it will only add to his confidence. Yes, it will. Well, let's hear from the man himself. Well, what is happening? Doing? Happy? I'm all right. That was a bad performance, man. I'll be honest. You know when you know you could do a bit more? I was rushing it, sloppy work. I've got much more to come. That's a good thing, you know? First title, first of many, but there's much, much improvement needed to be done, honestly. I don't want to be highly critical, but I say that I'm going to be world champion. That's not a performance of a world champion, man, but it's a performance of a future world champion. Uh, that, that being said, right, it's a performance of a future world champion. You just got to take away from it. People say you, you learn more from your losses, 
but I think real world champions learn in everything they do. In, in certain aspects of the match, you'll know you could maybe give yourself a bit more distance, have a little bit more patience, so you could land those shots with umph as opposed to maybe cutting them down a little bit. Exactly. But from my point of view, from our point of view, that was a wicked performance. Thank you should you, be man. very proud. Appreciate it, man, I appreciate it. And you know what? I'm always gonna be my biggest critic, but you know, like you said, it's just about having that patience, that experience, to so take your time. Don't go looking for the shot when the shot comes to you, you know? But um, I put a beating on him, that's good, but you know, I gotta be grateful that I got the victory full stop. I don't know why I got this map card in my mouth. But uh, yeah, it was, it's, uh, it was good, man. It was good. Do you want to take the mouth guard out? I kind of do, but it costs a lot of money, so I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> Listen, if we'd have told you beforehand that you were going to win your fight in the fourth round and have a new belt over your shoulder, you'd have taken that, right? Oh, no, 100%. 100%. You know what? That guy's not no slouch, man. That's my hardest fight to date. He was banging back. Even when I was banging out on him, they normally go into a show. He was trying to fire back with his own round, so. There you go. There we go. That's my man right there. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's supporting me on this journey. Loughborough University and Rich for posting, uh, you know, putting up a, a future world champion in the facilities as well and all my team as well. I uh, really appreciate it, man. I could be saying thank you to everyone, but all my sponsors, um, all the people who stand behind me, the people who supported it. Even the people who came out here today, I know I'm on early, but I just want to say appreciate it, man. I really, really do. But supporters is what you need in boxing to go to the top. How does it feel to have that first title then? It's, it's nice, you know what? I forget that I'm fighting for a title, it's all new to me, you know? Getting my first title in eight fights, it's great and it's a blessing. I think this is the first time everyone, anyone ever fought for the like, heavyweight Commonwealth Silver, so I guess I'm kind of making history in my own way, right? But it's good. I'm just happy that I got the victory, but uh, I'm more hungry that I need to go back in the lab and work. Oh, that's right. You got to let that sink in, go away from it, have a few days, let it sink in. Then everything you do, you just walk like a champion, you breathe like a champion, you're just the champion that you are. 100% man, I'm the world champion man. Right now, that's what I see myself as. But for now, I'll take it man, I'm, a, I'm the people's champion, you know? I'll take that too. <laughs> well, it's another belt in Nottingham alongside all of the belts that this guy's won as well. Echo, Nottingham, Nottingham is on the up, isn't know, it? I know man, we're high. Nottingham's on the map. Nottingham's on my back, Nottingham's on Echo's back, Lee Wood. We're doing things, man, and you know, to be able to sit in front of my brother now, him commentate on a fight, it's crazy, man. We're doing things, you know, and we're really gonna pave the way for what can come from Nottingham, you know? It's a small city, but we're, we're men with big dreams. Well, you talked about how you're the first to fight for that title. I think you were the first to drop the title as well. You dropped it in the ring. What's going on? Uh, I don't know, man. I can't <laughs> lie to you. Uh, these gloves are hard. <laughs> They'll have to be even. Look, I'm struggling sure holding this mic right now, but we're versatile, man. Multifaceted, can do a lot of things. <laughs> I'll tell you, Debbie, you'll get used to the belt control soon. Oh, I like that. You see, that, that's, that's just all in my stride, man. Taking it all in my stride. But yeah, um, overall, I'm happy. You know, um, I'm going to watch it back, see where I can improve. I already know where I can improve. But most of it is just patience, man. Patience in, on a journey, patience in life. You just get to enjoy things and do things better, you know? Let me ask you this, what, what do you want to do next? Because that puts you in a good position for the Commonwealth. You're the mandatory for the full Commonwealth title, currently held by Joshua Boatsy. I, I don't know what his plans are with that belt. We know Ben Whitaker, for example, is coming to this show tonight. He's in, the, you know, he's from this area. He's going to be here as well. What's on your mind? On my mind is to get better, man. I don't even worry about anyone else. I need to worry about myself, take care of myself, make sure I'm the best Ezra Taylor, because the best Ezra Taylor, I believe, can be anyone. So I just want to... Keep my head down, remain humble, even in victory, hopefully never in defeat, and just keep working, man, so I can, you know, start contending for the Commonwealth and make sure I put on good performances, because this boxing game, you make one mistake, lapse of concentration, everything has got your hands like that. And I'm not here for that, man. I'm really here to, to go all the way. So I just need to hone down on my skill and my craft with my team and make sure that we just come better, man. One final thing. What was uh, Prince Oko Nazi saying to you at the end? There was a bit of a dispute. I was just chatting at his ass, man. He's talking. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> I apologise, but he was, he's basically saying I'm hitting him on the back of his head and whatever, Ross, when his eyes swelled, swelled up and his, his lips bleeding and whatever. But you can't take that up with me, man. I'm just a fighter, same as him. Take up with the referee or take up with the, bro the board, not me. I'm just in there to do a job, and clearly I did. That's why I got this belt on my shoulder. Okay. Congratulations, Ezra Taylor. Eight fights and you've got your first title. We're going to let you go. Go and enjoy the show because it's such a good show. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm going to go in the back. And uh, yeah, man, like you said, just enjoy what I've just done. It's a big accolade that I shouldn't downplay. 
Um, but yeah, eight and all, six knockouts. I'm on my way up, man. Thank you for your time as well. Good Thank man. you, Echo, man. Be good yourself. Go rest and reload the cannon and reload the cannon, time. man. It's coming out with a big cannonball <laughs> next time, man. Straight in someone's jaw. Love that. Thank you very much, Ezra Taylor. Drop that mic. Go on, drop it. No, we're, we're the time watches. Oh, he actually did. I, I don't think that mic even works anymore. He proper dropped it. Proper dropped it. That that will probably come out of his purse, actually, when I when, when, I, when I raise that. Uh, but no, fantastic win for him. He's in good spirits as well. And uh, as you said, it's a good moment for Nottingham. Yeah, it's a wicked n moment for Nottingham. I've been flying Nottingham's flag for a while, Leewood especially as well. Now we've got Ezra bringing another title back to the city. You can see Ezra with promoter Frank Warren there as well. Knows a thing or two about promoting light heavyweights, of course. Anthony Yard, really top of the tree when it comes to British light heavyweights. And Frank and Ezra just having a chat there. And I think we're gonna grab a chat with promoter Frank Warren, who's going to join us. Hello, Frank. How are you, man? How are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Right, good. So what are we doing? Frank, did you watch? You. What, what did you think of? Uh, what did you think of Ezra there? I think he bowled really well. Yeah. Got into once he got into his rhythm, settled down, let his shots go. Good, good jab, right hands, and some nice uppercuts. Done extremely well. He's now the Commonwealth Silver Light Heavyweight Champion. So what does that mean? What can you tell us? Well, it means he now fights for the full title. The next fight will be for the full title. So. And it's good for him to get the experience of, be, of being in a title fight. I mean, sometimes people look at these, what you would call, you know, not the full title alone one, but you're in a title fight. You're doing it very early in your career and you're getting the experience of training for a championship fight. And that's really important. And it also gets moves you up the rankings rather than having an eight rounder or an ordinary 10 rounder. Just talking to Echo, there is a, a buzz in the air here in Birmingham. This is a special show that we're, we're going to have tonight live on TNT Sports from half six. Tell us what you're looking forward to. I've got to be honest, it's such a good card. I'm looking for, forward to all, I'm looking forward to seeing Echo back in the ring as well. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to all the fights. I mean, every fight on there is a good competitive fight. Some really good matchups, close fights, you know, undefeated fighters going in with each other. And... You know, the atmosphere is going to be brilliant. The time you know, uh, Nathan gets into the ring, it's going to be something special. But, I, you know, I like these nights because there's so much on the line for everybody in their careers. And it's not the end of the world if someone gets beat. But the winners, especially what's all going on at the moment in the world of boxing, can make themselves or can really push their careers forward and get involved in some seriously big fights. And that's what we're really focusing on at the moment, especially with TNT. What about Joe Joyce though? How, how important how important is a win for Joe Joyce tonight, the juggernaut? Joe can't afford three losses on the trot. He's got to win this fight, a lot of pressure on him. It's a good good fight for him. Uh, Cash Alley fancies it because he's coming off of two losses. And he knows that if he beats him, that's a bit of a statement for him. Uh, it's uh it's a, it's not gonna be an easy job. It's a tough, it's a you know, mentally it's a tough fight for Joe. Coming back and knowing that. He can't afford to slip up, and if he does come through, he's back in, he's, you know, literally back at the table again and, and being involved in a big fight. His next fight, if he comes through, will be quite a significant fight. He's coming at a, a career heavy as well. Is that something we should be, like, concerned about or look into? What, what did you make uh, of that? Look, I've got to think, I mean, I, you know, they've got a reason to do what they're doing. I like fighters to come in, the heavyweights, I like to come in at their best possible weight. I don't like them coming in heavy. I want to see them, because all you're doing, you're dragging weight around on you. You want to be built for speed. So you've got the power and have to speed. I mean, don't drain yourself, but don't cart a lot of weight on around on you if you need it. Now, Joe may feel very comfortable, and he's not like he's, uh, with the greatest respect to him, he's not a youngster, so as you get older, it's a bit more difficult as a heavyweight sometimes to shift the weight. Maybe he's comfortable and he feels that's, that's going to be his optimum weight tonight and good luck to him. One of the fights that Echo you were looking forward to was in your weight division between uh, Owen Cooper and Ethan James. Tell us why you're looking forward to that one. I'm looking forward to it because obviously they, they shared some time together obviously in that training camp kind of scenario and it will be interesting to see how they've 
tune that into their performance. The person who's left their feelings at home is going to be the person who gets their hand raised. Two unbeaten welterweights, Frank, that one. Say again, mate. Two unbeaten welterweights, well, that one. Th that makes a good fight, doesn't it? I mean, neither of them want to lose. You know, they both want to win, obviously. And it'll be competitive. And who knows? You know, it'll be competitive when we, we see where we go with it. I'm, I'm, I reckon one of them will call you out if they win. Oh, that's fine. I've got all the smoke. And, and as I told you before, like the creature in the Black Lagoon, you say my name enough and I'll appear at the other side he, of the he's ring. He's a fighting man. Don't worry about that. That's what he is. And also a fighting man is Liam Dangerous Davis, who challenges for the IBO world title tonight. Tough fight. It's a step up for him. He's in with a good fighter that we know over these shores. He came over here and done a job on a win over Lee McGregor. That was no mean feat. And so... You know he comes to win, or he's, you know, he's got that winning mentality. And for Liam, who's done everything that's been asked of him, you know, he's, he's done it the traditional way, the British, Commonwealth, European, and done it in quite fast time. What's this, is his 15th fight, I think, tonight? So it's, uh, he's done everything, as I say, that's been asked of him. And I think for him, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to make a statement. And he's capable of doing it. And that IBO world title, if he picks that up, it's it's a piece of the jigsaw, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Look, they're, they're the four main titles, as we always refer to them, and the IBO is like, you know, it's, it's, it's recognised as a title. But that would get him a seat at the table, as I always say. That's what will happen with it. And what have you made of Tyron Zoiga this week? So Zach Parker is, is coming back. He's trying to get back on the world title trail. Tyron Zoiga has been in a, a kind of mischievous mood this week. Well, look, he'd be in a mischief move, and he's uh, obviously, he seems pretty calm and collected. He certainly did at the uh, at the press conference, but listen, once they're in that ring and the bell goes, they get down to business, and then that's what it's going to be all about. And, you know, for Zach, he knows he can't afford also to slip up. You know, he had that injury against uh, uh, Ryder, which was, a, for our, from our perspective, was a great shame, great for John. But... Um, it's a fight for him. It's a must-win fight, no doubt about that. Feels like in Zach Parker and Joe Joyce, you've got two fighters there who are on the cusp of something very, very big and then just stumbled. Now they've got to get back on that road. Yeah, look, that happens in boxing. I mean, look, you look at the heavyweight scene recently. You look at Joe Parker gets beat by Joe Joyce. Joe Parker's now, now come back and beat Zhang, who beat Joe Joyce twice. And, and you can't give up. You, a loss, I mean, you, you know, a, a loss is not the end of the world. If you've got this inside you and you've got the resolve and you want to come back and you really want, then you've got you're the opportunity to be given to you and then it's up to you to make it work. So for both of these guys tonight, it's a big, big chance for them to go out there and get involved in a really, really big and significant fight. And they're capable of doing it. But they're in with guys who are also not coming to make up the numbers. They're going to make them fight. They're going to make them think. Well, also not coming to make up the numbers is Brad Pauls. He is the English champion. And Echo, we were talking about yeah. that British title. It's his dream. It's for so many fighters, it's their dream belt, Echo. Oh, so many fighters, it's like their world title fight. As I told you, it's like that British crown was melted down and turned into a belt and it's that's why it's so coveted so many fighters covet that british title frank well, and look the british you know the british title it, 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 you know obviously we're in britain so it's, it means something it's significant it's a step up the ladder to get to where you want to be but i think more in, not being dismissive of a british title but more important as far as nathan's concerned he's looking for this fight, big fight in summer at stoke city he's a football team he wants, to, he wants to fight at the ground. We will make that happen. But that can only happen if he wins tonight. So he can achieve his dream tonight. And he's done everything that's been asked of him up to as yet. Because a lot of people look at him and thought he was like a guy who sells a lot of tickets, but he was at a certain level. Well, he's risen above that level and done it in a, in a and especially in his last fight, done it in a significant way, being in with Denzel, who... What was it a fight before or a couple of fights before that went the distance with a with a with you know probably the best at his weight division world championship fight and could have won it had he in the first four rounds not been so tentative if he got stuck into the fight early on i think he could have won it and he certainly was coming on strong at the end so when he when denzel was in the ring i mean i think nathan was something like eight to one against and he fought like the, he fought 
to his credit, on the night like a champion. He got his tactics right, he boxed intelligently, he showed he's not just about being a, you know, my, my Delilah, it was by my, my Nathan. Look at this fella, look what he can do. And he went out there and done the job in, in fantastic style. And I'll say tonight, that continues for him. He will get a shot at the world title. Couple more final ones, Frank. Dennis McCann and Brad Strand, two, two unbeaten guys. Again, British title on the line. It's a big one. Queensbury against Queensbury. I mean, that's what it is. And they're, they're both exciting young fighters. They both fancy the job. They're very competitive. They come from competitive, real competitive stables. Uh, you know, Dennis has done more or less everything that's been asked for him. He got that, he suffered that terrible cut against Baluti and it got, it got stopped for that reason. But, you know, he's a quality, quality operator and everybody expects big things from him. And the same with Brad. And he comes from a stable uh, uh, up in Liverpool where Paul Stevenson, his manager and trainer, have done some good things. He's done, you know, Paul's a, a very, very good trainer and done some great things with his fighters. And you only got to look at Nick Ball last week. He gets them into great shape. So these guys are both I think at this stage of their careers, probably in the best shape they've ever been in. It's a fantastic fight. It's a, it's a mouth-watering one. Fight written all over. Oh, it, it has. Yeah. Frank, before we let you go, any little news you can give us? Any scoops? Any exclusives for the Queensbury stream? Anything you can tell us? Yeah. Arsenal, <laughs> in their next match, are gonna. We're gonna do Bayern. We're going to do them. How but, about that? I mean, yeah, look, we'll take it. Best of luck to you. I'm not sure you're necessarily correct on that, but best of luck to you, Arsenal. <laughs> and I don't Frank. know about that. We'll see. <laughs> Frank, thank you so you're much. Welcome. We're going to let you go. And Echo, let me, uh, before we close off here, you know, we're, we're minutes away now from the live broadcast. Let me get your final Echo. Come on. What's, what, what are you looking forward to tonight? Tonight, I'm looking forward to sitting in my seat and having my world rocked by seven amazing, tantalizing, explosive matches. You know, whilst I just cruise, wait for my chance to get back in there, get back in my lane and just take off. Yeah, we, we need to see you again. We need to see the engine. I can tell the engine is purring. You're ready to go, aren't you? Oh. He's ready, rearing. Look at him. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm pairing, I've had a few changes and I can tell everyone that when I'm back, different vibe, more energy, bloodlust, the lot. Goodness me, I can't wait for it. Echo, thank you so much for your constant echo for the last hour or so. Fist bump it on the way out. And thank you for joining us today. I think I'll, I'll speak to you, I'll speak to you. Thank you for joining us today. That concludes our live stream. We had one brilliant fight for you. Ezra Taylor picking up the first title of his career and we are live 6.30 TNT Sports 1 The Magnificent 7 Ride Again. Tune in.